and fat. If you have any of those late in the evening, what do you think happens to your body? What do you think your body does with it? You can't burn that up. It stores it, it keeps it. I'm a living testimony. <laughs> I've stored for long enough. And um, it, I, I saw there was a time I needed to change. So, sorry, there's another speaker there. Yeah, so basically, certain foods you do not eat at certain times. Okay? I'll show you a little meal plan. So, the proteins, carbs, fats are best eaten first thing in the day. You're, you're active throughout the day, you're burning off, your body can use it for repair, for growth, etc. Okay, next please. Right, <clears throat> my nutrient spotlight is proteins and water. Now, one of the reasons I've chosen protein, I will ask for questions, but because there's a lot to go through, I just want to go through it. Some I may skip over, but I'll give the presentation to the health director. Um, Proteins. In a vegan diet, what are we told about protein? Has, what have people told you? Soy. Soy. You need meat. Yeah, you shouldn't be vegan. Or beans is good for protein. Any Soy. Other sources? Soy. Soy. What else have you been told? Any? Anything? You'll lack B12. You'll lack B12, and sometimes the other one is iron. Okay. <coughs> Now there's variable sources, but I'm gonna go through it rather than try to explain it just from a single word on the screen. So, Ethan? Right, proteins are large complex molecules which play a crucial role, role in the body. They are extremely important and they work the hardest in our cells because they're constantly repairing and, and building and you know, fixing things in our cells. Next, please. Ethan. All right, the requirements for this cell includes, and this is what protein does, it helps with the structure of the cell, the function of the cell, and the regulation of the body's tissues and organs. Now, do we have a lot of those things in our body? Tissues, organs. Even this young lady mentioned B12. That's our nerves, that's your nervous system. So, um, next. Okay. Proteins are made up of building blocks named amino acids. Now, why I wanted to focus on protein is often we are told you must make sure you have lots of nuts at every single meal. You've got to make sure you have a lot of protein and protein and protein. What happens when you eat too much protein? What did we say already? We store it. If you're not using it and you're not active, you're just going to store it. So you need to be think about how much protein you need based on your levels of activity. Right? So I'm realistic. We're not all going to be as active. But on the days, so that I don't I don't lift weights and things every single day. So on the days when I'm doing, I'm in the gym and I'm doing the weights, etc. I might eat more protein just before, an hour or so before I go to the gym. But then on the days when I'm not in the gym, when I'm not doing lots of walking, when I am just at home, I make sure I reduce my protein. Not that you don't eat it, you need it each day, because your body can't store protein. It stores it as fat, but it doesn't store it as protein for the next day, okay? And that's a term they call protein poisoning you just have too much protein, okay? So think about your day, yeah? There's no, there's no formula that says you have to have three meals a day. You don't have to, it's a choice. You look at your levels of activity, okay? If you're diabetic, you will need to eat, you know, when you need to eat. But you don't need to eat a whole big plate of food at each meal. So, you know, just think and then, Balance everything out and enjoy it. It's a journey. Love your body. Your body will love you back. Um, there's hundreds and thousands of these small units called amino acids that make up a complete protein. What did I say? There's of what? 
that make up a Right, so when we think of this church, look at how many cheers there are in the church. So if we think of each one of these as a type of amino acid, but it's a whole protein molecule, yeah? If we think of it that way. It then tells you that you don't have to eat one type of protein to get all the protein that you need. You can get it from various places. Because different foods have different level, different amino acids in them, okay? So, so make your meals really interesting, or else you become bored of the beans. You really will. And there are so many places you can find the protein, like in dark leafy vegetables, for instance. So mix and match them. So there's 20 different types of amino acids that can be combined to make a complete protein that we need. For this reason, combinations of proteins will enable the vegan diet to be complete and balanced. <clears throat> Vary your diet because it helps your body access varied nutrients and avoids deficiency. Remember, um, Nathan? Erica. Erica, you mentioned the B12. And um, has anyone got any idea of where you can get B12? Any sources? It might not be a single source, molasses, yeah. Any others? Pardon? Nutritional yeast. Ah, yeah, that is one, but I've got a sticking point with that. I found some research on that. And on a technicality, it's. Um, Monothonium glutamate, it's MSG in a different form. Yeah. It's just how it's manufactured and the name it's given and process. Yeah. So, yeah, next one. So, in terms of B12, uh, hold off a minute. B12, one of the things that I've started using was um, Marmite. I don't like Marmite. I hate Marmite. Marmite, M-A-R-M-I-T-E. It, it's, it looks like molasses, it's a dark thing. It's in England, but I've seen it here. I saw it in months. Yeah. In the Caribbean market also. Okay. You, honestly, you don't need too much of it. You really don't. I couldn't. <laughs> it is a bit salty. But that's one of the things that I've, I've used. It's got a salty taste. So that, I'm just saying that's just one of the things. It's not the only place. Um, but I've done some research, as I said, and found a lot of the sources. Now, I don't like Marmite. We've got, a, <laughs> we've got adverts in London. And um, there's like this advert with this bird. And then with the, um, what was it again? I can't remember. Anyway, this other character. Now, one at the Marmite, and they're like, ooh, this is really nice. And then the bird at the Marmite, and it's like, <laughs> so you either love it or you hate it. But I decided, uh, that's taking me to my book, I decided to live. Um, I decided that I needed to make sure I take in these nutrients. There was a point at which, I think was it last year, I was deficient in vitamin B and iron. I had those deficiencies, going vegan and not planning it right. And what happened, it exhibits itself, the, 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 there was one lady who had it so bad she had to start having injections because of the vitamin B deficiency. It exhibits itself by, um, in, in uh, what do you call it? causing your nervous system to react almost as if you're having a stroke on one side of your body. I had that and it was so bad, I went to the doctors, he sent me straight to the hospital, they did an ECG, put all these things over me and they told me I'm fine, I've got a very good heart, there's nothing wrong with my heart. So I had to start taking vitamin B supplements. By the next time I did a blood test, about six months later, they said it was okay. 
but also doing my own research and making sure I ate things that I may not have liked, but it helped me to stay healthy. And that's what you're going to find. As you go through this journey of transitioning in your diet, you're going to eat things you do not love. But because you want to be healthy and happy, yeah, and be there for your family, and you're tired of the pain. Oh, this pain in my arm. And you're thinking, I'm thinking, I'm in my 40s now, complaining like I'm a 70 year old, and my mum is stronger than me. So um, I had to do something about it. Um, <clears throat> and some of the things myself and Yvette have started doing is um, juicing more here and drinking just plain, like I've got in here, plain water with just lemon. That's it. I don't add sugar. I don't have sugar in my house, and we were both saying the same thing. Sometimes people are like, you don't have sugar? How can you not have sugar? I don't have sugar in my house, you know? So if you do come, there won't be any sugar. Um, I don't use honey either. So I, I think your taste buds will also start to adjust to this new diet. I like to taste the sweetness in food naturally. Some things I eat, close my eyes, hold my breath, you know, just because it will be good for me. Um, since I've been here, I love the place. It's my third time in Maryland. I haven't had a single burger mm -hmm. fast food. We haven't been to any fast food joint at all. Um, my meal today was, what was it? It was some whole meat with bread and some sprouts. It looks like my sandwich was living. Yeah, had some <laughs> <laughs> and vegan cheese. But raw food is good, so I'm 50% raw now. I did it as a challenge for my readers, but um, I just eat like that now, 50% raw. So anyway. Water. Water. So we, we talked about protein. Are there any questions before I move on? We were talking about protein. Any questions? More might come up a bit later as I go through. Yeah? How do you determine how much protein your body needs based on your exercise level and how do you know like, what you think you're getting at? Right. So you can... Um, if you're actually following an exercise routine, you will need to get ex um, guidance from either a personal trainer or nutrition. And um, there is a company I'm linked with, ID Life. I don't know if any of you have heard it. Um, you can put in your stats, and it will kind of generate the kind of the levels of protein that you would need. They're quite good. Um, so you would need to get that specific advice from people who have research. You won't always have access to a nutritionist. I'm not telling you go spend all this money. But there's a lot of things you can find on the internet. My doctor. Your doctor is? I'm doctor. I'll be on walking. Theodore Walken. And he's strong. Okay. And so do... He says I do because he knows he's got all those Yeah. So do, do consult your GP. But like myself, I came from... In 2013, I had a cafe. Everything was fine up until then. I had a cafe. And I used to bake cakes every day, bread, um, food for my customers as and when and whatever they needed. And whatever was left over, I would have. And then I started adopting, you know, a size I didn't have before. Um, so <clears throat> you will need to seek advice because you can't just go from, and I'm talking from my experience, you can't go from a, a stage of being I remember I went to a doctor, my grandmother was still alive, and this doctor was from, you know the places where they're having wars now? Um, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I think, I'm not sure it's Syria, but in Saudi Arabia, around there. And I remember her telling, Iran, that's it. Not Saudi Arabia, sorry, Iran. And um, the doctor says to me that I'm obese. Excuse me? I'm done. How could she just tell me that? I went to another doctor, and the doctor <laughs> says to me, you need to lose weight. How rude. <laughs> you know, but um, it was true. And I remember telling my grandmother, and she said, your doctor said, you're a beast? How oh, dear she, you know. But um, I've had to, to, to be honest about myself where I am. And there are people who are slim who are obese, because their internal, their internal system, some people, they actually have their organs cut.
covered internally with fat. There was a man doing research and he was so shocked to find out he was obese. And he was skinny like this and tall. So it, it, it could be what's going inside. But to answer your question, seek um, guidance. You need to do research. I would say with your protein, I've got that all in my course, which you can find online. Um, with your protein levels, they, there is a guide based on your weight and how many grams per pound. But when you check out the amount of protein they're telling you to eat, it's a shed load of protein that most people do not need. So you have to be really careful and balance things out. So I would say in the mornings, well, I don't use nuts too much. So I, I don't get my protein really from the nuts. So I have to be a bit varied with my diet. But I would say do some research, find out online where you can get that information. I mean, I, I compiled it all, I can tell you later. If you go to my website, you'll see it there. I've compiled it all in an ebook, um, but I am not an expert to tell you exactly how much. So you will need to like get weighed. They'll have to look at your lifestyle, etc. And if you've got um, a medical history, that too may impact on how much protein you eat and what types. Mm. Yeah. So those are some of the things to consider. And protein shakes. If you think you're not getting enough. Um, but I could always speak to you later, but I'm not an expert in terms of telling people this is how much you need to get of this. Yeah. But I have found out through my experience, and I studied nutrition, studied dietetics, that um, it's really important that we get our nutrition right as a vegan. Because you could be missing out on many things and make yourself ill. Yeah. And as Erica said, as Erica said, vitamin B12 and iron are the biggest problems in a vegan diet. And if you don't get those, like this lady, she had to have an operation. It just got really awful. And she's been a vegetarian, a vegan for years. You know, she walks around, she's, she's younger than me, and she's walking around like this. And I'm thinking, wow, all that from a vitamin B deficiency. So you really do need to get seek medical advice, I would suggest. So water transports nutrients to the cells. Now remember we said, what did we say about food utilization? When you eat the food, what happens to the food? It's absorbed into your body. Remember you wrote it down? Look at your question. Before it gets to your intestine, what, what happens? It needs to be broken down in your intestines. And from your small intestine, goes into your bloodstream. Now, if the food you are eating is all solid, heavy things, how is it going to get into your bloodstream? Do you see why it's important to drink water? Can you see why now all these things are coming together? Mm. Why it's really important? And our body is, what, three quarters water? Mm. So we need to um, drink a lot of water. This is like the best mode of transport your cells have ever had. Now. Um, think of a diamond encrusted Rolls Royce. Well, in England, that's like top of the range. I don't know what your cars. What's, what's, what's your supercar here? Your um, most expensive car? Lamborghini. Lamborghini? <laughs> Maserati? So, can you imagine that encrusted with diamonds, with a white leather interior, and the best accessories money could buy? That's what water is to your body. Yeah? Mm. It is so crucial, and it's like luxury transport. It's a smooth ride. And when I say that, you understand what I mean. We were talking about the large intestine. What happens in the large intestine? What builds up in there? Right. Can you see why we need water? All right. We need some luxury transport. Okay? So, yeah. Next. Yes, yeah, sorry. I'm glad you asked. Because in, in the book that I have, the e-book, I do touch on that. And the question I ask is, is water vegan? Is water truly vegan? 
Now, there's all different types of water, and um, Yvette was telling me something I, I, I didn't know. Spring water for every day, but if you're fasting, fasting, distilled, distilled, dis, distilled. distilled water, yeah, and the different types. The, the other things that you find in water is your micronutrients. Can you tell me what micronutrients are? Vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals. Yeah? Even though they're trace elements, they're still there. Okay? So there are some waters which have an excess of minerals that your body does not need. And this is why you're asking the question. Some water is really not good for you to drink. Yeah? But... What did we say earlier about the Simply Vegan philosophy? Yeah, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Just keep it simple. If it's what you have, use what you've got. Sorry, I almost broke into some there. <laughs> <laughs> there was a song myself and we used to get at 6 o'clock on a Sunday morning to watch this gospel program. And one morning we got up and turned on the TV and the first thing we heard was, Use what you've got. <laughs> No, it may seem like you ain't got a lot, oh my lord. You just use what you've got. <laughs> All right, next one, Ethan. <clears throat> yes, so in answering the water question, distilled water, spring water, normally distilled water, when you're fasting, we don't have easy access to that in London. Just spring water and mineral water or tap water. Yes, it is possible. You can, because remember we were talking about the food utilization. It's all going back to the how your body uses food. If you're eating this food, think about it. You're eating this food. It's gone into your small intestines. Nutrients are supposed to be going out into blood, your bloodstream. But you've drank so much water, you've diluted the nutrients, your body can't access everything, can it? And then all this water, I don't know if you've ever seen on YouTube, all this water in your stomach and acids and the food that's broken down, you know, the nutrients that need to come out just kind of won't. And then some people, I don't know, somebody has said that somebody died yeah, drinking too much water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just need to pace yourself throughout the day. Um, but you, you do need to drink water. We can't get away from that, people. You have to drink water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, they do say eight glasses, eight glasses a day. Uh huh. Yeah, you're swimming around. <laughs> yeah, in in order. So if I'm going to gym all the time, or I'm doing lots of walking, I do lots of walking in London because I'm like here. Your streets are really wide. I walk a mile, 1.8 miles to the gym, do my gym, whatever, then I walk 1.8 miles back. So I need to be drinking quite a lot because... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But then if I'm at home, and I'm at home for a full day, I do a lot of my work online, my business. I'm not gonna sit there and drink all that same amount of water. That's just not going to work, yeah? I will feel very uncomfortable. So again, this goes back to getting GP advice based on your weight, based on your levels of activity, and it varies. It won't be the same every day, you know? I think sometimes we religiously eat breakfast. It's got to be, like, I have cereal, I have toast, and you've got followed by a fruit, and you have to have a hot drink. You don't have to eat like that every single day. You might just have a smoothie that morning. We might just drink some juice and that's it. But I suggest you have a good breakfast. You always have a good breakfast at least. You know, eat, eat your breakfast like a, is it like a king? Yeah, yeah. Then your lunch like a, a, a prince. A prince. And then, a and then you supper like a pauper. Yeah. yeah. I always say that. And if you if you follow that guideline, just simple, like I said, keep it simple. Follow that guideline. You'll start to feel a lot better each day. Okay, so going back, Ethan, 
A basic overview of a vegan diet is you basically do not eat meat, fish, eggs, dairy products, and all other animal-derived foods or ingredients. Next, please. All right, so according to this philosophy, some people take it a bit step, a step further. I won't have a leather chair. I won't wear a leather shoes. I won't wear anything with a leather trimming. I won't have suede. Suede is actually pig skin. Um, um, I won't use wool. Now, wool, I cannot understand because you don't kill the, 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 the sheep. And if you don't take it off, you know, you're going to make them ill because it, yeah. And I actually went to a farm and there was this sheep called Karen, I think her name was. And I stood there and they shaved the sheep. You know, it was the summertime, they had to take it off. And I've got it at home. I had to go home, they told me how to wash it. So I've got the whole fur of the wool of one particular um, sheep. And she was an award winning sheep, and I've got all her information, her bio, I, mean, I don't know what to do with the wool. It's just there at home in a knit bag. One day somebody can spin it for me and make a cardigan, I don't know. But it's just interesting. So I thought, if I ever make anything from it, I'm going to call it Karen. But um, wool, they don't use soap, soap, some soaps, the base is um, animal products. Mm. Um, cosmetics produced by animal products. Now let me ask you, I don't know what the normal living wage is, but what is the average monthly take home pay for family? That's a hard question, yeah. but I mean the lowest of the low. What is the lowest? Zero would be low. From the minimum, minimum wage, 750 is the minimum. Eight dollars an hour. Now, can you imagine eight dollars an hour? Let's say you've worked a forty-hour week. Yeah, but they're cutting back people's hours, so you only get twenty hours a week. And then they take tax. Now in England, they take national insurance from that. Then you have to pay water bill in England, water bill, electricity bill. You have to pay council tax. You have to pay your rent. Now, what do you have left to spend on food? So, can you see why I said being simply vegan or a simply plant-based diet, or just transitioning, just doing something different, even if it's one meal, it, it 